In the age of the headline-grabbing, vast contemporary art installation, the humble drawing can get rather overlooked. But there's a new project that aims to change all that. The Art Fund has given MIMA, the Middlesbrough Institute of Modern Art, a million pounds to spend on international drawings. I went along to see just what they've been buying. Once upon a time, drawing was all about truth. Artists were precise, representational, more or less talented. They captured what they saw in front of them. Drawing was a means to an end. Then suddenly, those old definitions of drawing radically changed. Could drawing be a film or a collage? Could even the simple act of walking, the process of making your mark on the ground, be proposed as a form of drawing? I think like contemporary art, contemporary drawing isn't all what you might expect. That's why the new show at MIMA, Middlesbrough Institute of Modern Art, is a brave but risky proposition. MIMA specialises in drawing, and three years since winning a million pounds from the art fund, they've built a collection of work by post-war American artists. Drawing in Progress is an exhibition of the works they've collected so far. I've always loved drawing. I love its spontaneity, its immediacy, the way it puts you in touch with an artist. Literally, it gives you an artist's touch. It gives you their thought processes. For me, it's in a sense the most naked of all artistic media. It's the one place where an artist can't really hide. And yet, in the bold, brave, experimental, radical world of contemporary art, it can also be a fairly baffling medium. It's quite often difficult to know exactly what you're looking at. So what is this collection trying to tell us about modern American drawing? The 26 works are so diverse that I'm struggling to make sense of it all. Gavin. Hello. My guide through the labyrinth of your new collection. My pleasure, my pleasure. I mean, I need help. I'm, hey, I'm an expert. <laughs> Some, a lot of these artists are actually quite unfamiliar. So how do you give a kind of coherence to a collection like this? How do you stop it just being you know, almost like smithereens in a kaleidoscope of this, of this explosion that's American art in the 20th century. What we've tried to do here is to really engage with the artists. And we're saying, you know, how, what for you is representative of this exploding moment? What for you captures that, the essence, the nugget of when drawing did something more for you than any other media? There was an exhaustion, there was a, a fatigue with the idea of the academy. And all of these artists were more interested in what you're describing. The explosion, the, the, you know, <laughs> theatre, language, poetry. So where I see fragmentation and something actually quite confusing and I'm not quite sure what I'm looking at, you're saying, well, that's the whole point. Precisely. So what have we got here then? This... I mean, this, this looks to me like models for sculpture. Um, You're absolutely on the nose there. This is an incredible suite of drawings by Stephen Antonakis. And again, Stephen, primarily known as a sculptor, but was interested in neon. We're, we're talking the, the late 60s. Mm -hmm. So we're talking this very experimental moment, mm -hmm. just about the beginning of minimalism. Suddenly, somehow, electric light mm -hmm. could be art. Mm -hmm. So this is a little slice of that history. It is an absolute piece of history. I did go and visit Stephen in New York, and I said, are your drawings sketches? Are they preparatory or are, do they have a life of their own? Do they have a value, an autonomous value? And Stephen was like, this after image, the sense of a, of a glowing drawing, this is doing more for me than what my sculptures were doing. Well, well, how's this a drawing? Well, this is literally a moving drawing by an incredible artist called Robert Breer. He's taking these still drawings and he's forcing the drawings through the machine and making them living, breathing drawings. Some people may find it quite hard to get their, their head around the idea that, that a film can be a drawing. Breer was very interested in taking a line for a walk, you know, a very famous quote about drawing. And Breer wants to take a line into three dimensions, into cinema. He wants to take it through light. It's a way of making the drawings bleed into each other or it's relate to each other. It's making them exciting and alive. My initial response to the exhibition was one of more than slight bewilderment. You've got a lot of very different work pulling in a lot of different directions, but I think that's the whole point. And 
talking to Gavin has really clarified that to me, that what they've decided is that this particular period in American art was a kind of explosion moment when things were developing in all kinds of different directions and the language of art itself was being pulled in different directions. And I think once you, once you know that and once you understand that that's really the reason for this exhibition and this collection, then it does all begin to fall into a kind of place. It makes sense. But there's one thing that doesn't quite make sense to me. Can language really be described as drawing? Lawrence Wiener's new work is composed from words. Since the 60s, Wiener, one of the founding fathers of conceptual art, has made what he calls sculptures out of text. And now he says these words are a drawing. Tell me, tell me why this is a drawing. Why is it a drawing and not a text? Oh, using a uh, text for drawing is no problem. It tells you something, but drawing is explicit. Drawing is not implicit. There's nothing hidden in a drawing. When you draw for people, you're drawing something to tell them. It's a message. This is obviously drawn, and the typeface is something I designed. And, of course, I would design a typeface that I could draw. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I associate your work, maybe from an earlier phase in your career, as simply being words, word art. No, that's sculpture. This is drawing. <laughs> I see... So... I, I see language and the materials referred to as making sculpture. But I was asked here to do a series of drawings. There is a difference. I'm struggling, I am struggling. Why I'm are you struggling? Just Why slightly. is it so I'm just, complicated? I, I don't know, I'm struggling with the idea that that that, that isn't a sculpture, when arguably that I could... I a could sculpture is a fact of, of material relationship. A line is a line for all that, is a phrase that is not sculptural. It's just talking about itself. Self-referential things are not art. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> my brain is exploding. Oh, I hope not. I can live without the mess all over my jacket. <laughs> After talking to Lawrence, I'm still a little bit confused, but I'm not giving up yet. Artists are often rather enigmatic when quizzed about their own work, and Lawrence Wien is no exception, but I think when you look at his drawings, his preparatory drawings for the wall drawing, you really get his thought processes. The end of a line, moving forward. Moving forward is Middlesbrough City slogan. Here, the talk of a line. Talk is the energy that you get when a spanner turns a bolt. Here, within the constraint of a line, bridges made to appear and not crossed. It's almost like a set of crossword clues, but it all comes together here. The sort of, as it were, the complete working drawing. And here you can see what he's thinking about. He's thinking about Middlesbrough's industrial past as a great shipper and exporter of steel. And he's saying, I think, that once upon a time, this place, this place with its heavy industry, forged a multitude of lines in the form of bridges that were exported all over the world. Now that doesn't exist anymore, the end of a line. But on the other hand, I think he's saying that other forms of creativity will take their place. For him, a line is a line for all that. It's up to you, Middlesbrough to harness your creativity and create the lines that will lead the city into the future. I'm still not sure that Lawrence Wiener's work is a drawing. For me, it's a piece of word art about drawing, whether on paper or steel or in the mind. But then again, redefining drawing is what Mima is all about. So in that spirit, I thought I'd deliver my final judgment in the form of lines. And by the way, this isn't a drawing, it's a review.